Welcome to the video. Who remembers Uncut Magazine? Uncut Magazine was uh, a music magazine that was, uh, I think it came to prominence in the 1990s and lasted for about 20 years. And it followed in the footsteps of Q Magazine and Mojo and you know way before that Rolling Stone. Uh, and it was particularly good at championing musical, uh, different musical genres at different times. And it picked up on this thing called Americana, this style of music called Americana, which was like a, a little bit of country, a little bit of folk, a little bit of rock. And there's a whole load of new artists that came to prominence um, uh, during the 1990s. The roots of it may, may have been in like the Flying Burrito Bur uh, Brothers, uh, maybe early Neil Young. Um, but it, it created a whole bunch of really interesting releases. And um, today I'm going to talk about, about one of them that, that came out of that particular uh, genre. Um, and this album is by an artist, a female artist called Grey Delisle. And the album is called The Graceful Ghost. Now, Grey Delisle, how would you describe Grey Delisle's voice? She's like a cross between Dolly Parton, Nancy Griffith, Emmy Lou Harris, and Stevie Nicks. And if you kind of get your head around all of that, just imagine a very breathy, close mic'd female vocalist who sings some really songs about on some, some real strange subjects. Um, and it's interesting in this particular vinyl release, which is pretty tricky to get a hold of, I guess, like a lot of these, a lot of vinyl these days. There's some interesting descriptions of um, the music. Now that's a seven-inch single that came with it. Um, here we got some quotes from some of those magazines, New York Times. You have to marvel at the length she goes to decorating her old Gothic American world. Ethereal and weighty all at once. Utterly captivating. There is nothing more common mundane or business as usual as this brutally tender set, a very special album. So how would you describe the music? Well, it kind of, one of the things that she was, she was quite famous for um, before she became, believe it or not, a voiceover artist for cartoons, she released several albums uh, in the early, early 2000s. Um, late 90s, early 2000s. And this one was 2004, I think it was. But the whole style of it is, it's kind of based on, she recorded things uh, using old analog equipment with a very small band of musicians. And the style is, is kind of like fireside ballads. It's got this, um, that one of that one of those comments in the reviews mentioned American Gothic. It's kind of got this, uh, this, ominous feel to the songs they're story based songs they are very very late night and you get the sense of darkness and she sings about uh, death and other things as well it, it doesn't sound very appealing does it but it's brilliant at kind of late night um, late night uh, listening um, one of the, the the instrumentation is amazing she's um, she's an uh, she's an auto Harpist. Now, an auto harp. Um, look up auto harp. It's kind of got the, the, the stringed instrument with buttons on it, but it's a great, a really interesting sound. Um, there's acoustic guitar, a banjo, celeste, um, a pedal harmonium. There's a really interesting one which, uh, where one of the one of the musicians plays an out of tune piano, and it's like listening to a. In a, in a cowboy movie, a saloon piano that is slightly in the distance. It's like listening to it in a dream. It's kind of out of tune. It's really ethereal. And this album's got things like um, uh, a train in the distance, um, um, uh, you know, kind of in the background as well. Uh, so it's, it, it's interesting. The reason why I discovered this album is that over the years, I bought a bunch of hi-fi and I went to buy... Uh, audition and then buy some speakers from a dealer who dealt in uh, you know trade-ins and so on and I bought these speakers here which uh, 
uh, which are great speakers, but he demoed this album on a pair of huge speakers in his lounge. Uh, and I, I wish I'd remember the the uh, the, the brand and the uh, and the model of of the speakers, but they were amazing, absolutely fantastic, way way out of my price range. Um, but he he's, he played this album and he says, "Can you hear the dog?" And one of the interesting things about what 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 she does is that she records obviously in a studio, um, really small studio, because you can you can see some of the recording of it on an, on a on a DVD and on, on YouTube. But she also records stuff in like the, the lounge of her home and you can hear very, very, very faintly um, on one of the tracks, a dog barking in the background. And in fact, the seven inch single that came with uh, with this release, the dog box right at the end of it, which is really brilliant. It's really brilliant. Um, what's, what's particularly interesting is that it's all artifice. We like our musicians and our li we, we like them to play with true commitment and authenticity. But she's an actress and she's created with her little band of musicians and her producer a sound that has this feel of um, old parlour songs, ballads, as I've mentioned, um, that might have been first recorded 150 years ago. Um, and all of this is kind of a construct to create this atmosphere around this album. And even though it's not really, really authentic, it is a fabulous album to listen to and, and to discover. So some of the tracks from it, uh, it opens with the Jewel of uh, Abilene, which is uh, a song about a beautiful but mean woman. Uh, there's Sharecropping Man about the desire of a woman to you know, in love with somebody who's uh, kind of lives a very, very, very simple life. Uh, the Maple Tree is a wonderful song about uh, a young bride whose husband goes off to war and uh, it's reported that he dies. So she ends up marrying his brother, but of course he comes back and there's tragic consequences. Uh, Katie Allen is a song about uh, uh, a beautiful young young woman who who died, uh, drowned. Uh, this white circle on my finger is kind of uh, the, the 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 removal of the wedding ring, and uh, the broken the broken marriage, and it's just fabulously atmospheric. Wonderful, a wonderful album. Um, who should listen to it? Why should you listen to it? Well, if you're interested in kind of the dark storytelling uh, you like a little bit of American folk I mean just to give you an example from the genre which kind of touches on the same sort of territory uh, you may have heard of the band called the handsome family uh, this is their um, perhaps not the first album but this is the this is I think the third album but this is uh, full of great storytelling with a hint of tragedy uh, and, and Gillian Welsh uh, hell among the yearlings was a, a brilliant album um, again, very sparse sounding. I think they call it like uh, like something, um, the music from the Appalachian Mountains in, in the Eastern United States, um, uh, Shades of the Carter Family, a modern version of the Carter Family, if you're interested in uh, old style country country folk. Uh, so yeah, who? why would you listen to this? Well, I think if you love atmosphere, you love storytelling, you love wonderfully carefully crafted vocals and you've got a penchant for uh, female singer songwriters who are play sing singing ballads kind of a, a kind of downbeat style uh, for those late night listening sessions uh, it's heartily recommended uh, the cd is available i think this was only one th um, a number of I think a thousand vinyls so they're probably mostly in America I think I bought this from an American dealer myself um, so it's pretty hard to get if you like me living in the UK uh, but grab the CD if you can it's wonderfully atmospheric as I've said and very very satisfying so that is Grey Delisle and The Graceful Ghost thanks for watching and I'll be back with another music recommendation pretty soon cheers